morning. My name is Dan Madden. I am the head of strategy at GeoShore. I'd like to thank the foundation for having us today and for putting on this fantastic event. Today we've heard themes of making travel safer, more efficient, faster, more enjoyable, more personalized. At GeoShore, we like of, to think of safety a little more broadly. And one of the biggest challenges facing the travel industry today. And that is that we live in the age of perma-anxiety, a term coined by Skift Media to describe the condition of perpetual unease, uh, apprehension, and anxiousness experienced by both travelers and operated within uh, by travel platforms. This manifests itself in a variety of ways uh, CNN travel studies showing that the majority of international travelers rate safety as their number one concern, even more so than cost. Uh, AIG findings that women travelers today feel less safe than they did just five years ago. Uh, even myself, traveling over here this morning, I felt this perma-anxiety as I noticed the shows of force you see outside a variety of government buildings on the way here. And with a nod to James Bond villain Elliot Carver, there's no news quite like bad news. Some of the problems that manifest within this framework include a constant focus on fear mongering rather than serving the individual traveler, engaging that traveler, empowering that traveler. Safety and risk information overload that travelers face during the pre-trip planning process or during their, the duration of their trip. One-size-fits-all travel advisories that you see from State Department travel warnings, for example, risk of terrorism, risk of outbreak, so on and so forth, that are typically pasted on entire countries but how does one provision safety reassurance to those travelers? How do we assuage their anxiety given this framework, especially to promote travel to destinations that are new or unfamiliar? Well, what if we could leverage the latest in predictive data analytics, artificial intelligence, natural language processing, machine learning, wrapped in an elegant user experience, digital user experience, to engage travelers and flip the very notion of liability inherent in travel risk management into an organizational brand asset, all while making communities safer. And fortunately, today, we can do just that with ubiquitous safety awareness. Ubiquitous safety awareness is a term coined by the World Economic Forum and Accenture in their digital transformation initiative focused on new and emerging travel technology and they named ubiquitous travel and tourism safety as a core pillar required for promotion of safety feedback loops in developing economies that would then result in increased travel to those locations and further economic development. How do we create that solution, ubiquitous travel and safety awareness? Well, at GeoShore, we use a combination, predictive analytics, that's big data, statistical analysis, artificial intelligence, natural language processing, and crowdsourcing to create simple, rapidly understandable ratings to gauge the relative vulnerability of individual travelers anywhere in the world, whether it's where they are standing right now or where they are thinking about going along an itinerary. As you see, the rating system comes with a color gradation, very simple, much like a temperature scale. One, cool, safe, to 100, hot, less safe. How are we different than those State Department warnings and other travel risk information mentioned earlier? The quantification system, that's certainly differentiated. We are country level, but we're also near real time, tracked by machine learning algorithm 
in the cloud. We have drilled down to a level of granularity thus far unprecedented in terms of safety awareness. That is the neighborhood level. We're not just rating countries, cities, et cetera. We're, we go right down to the neighborhood. We could, in theory, rate a fire hydrant on the corner, but that wouldn't necessarily be useful to the traveler. They want to understand the neighborhoods surrounding the hotels where they're staying. Also, personalization. Safety is not a one-size-fits-all exercise. My wife feels very differently about her safety complexion traveling around the Spanish steppes in Rome at 11 o'clock at night than I do as a former military guy. So there's a personalization component, especially important for these demographics, women's safety and LGBTQ persons who tend to be more acutely aware of the need for safety analysis, safety assessment than, than I do, or than guys do. I mean, guys don't even like to ask, ask for directions, uh, as you know. Speaking of granularity, we've achieved uh, the, mo the widest geographic coverage in the world, 43,000 plus locations. This took over three years uh, and tens of thousands of man hours to develop this system. You have to go in and manually partition and score, mining the data variables that have contributory power to the safety complexion at these environments, and you have to do it on a global scale. This is not a simple task, as you might expect. That's why we leverage what we consider a three-legged data platform. The first leg is your standard structural um, analysis of, of structured variables. Uh, statistical analysis, so-called big data, which is simply uh, statistical analysis of a very, very large data set, approximately 65 to 75 variables per location, depending on data availability. That's everything from local, municipal, and country crime statistics up to uh, CDC Health and Welfare, CIA World Factbook, FBI and Interpol statistics, to macroeconomic variables, such as the rate of inflation versus the rate of per capita GDP growth in a particular area, which has correlation with social unrest. Uh, anecdotally, the number one predictive variable ahead of the Arab Spring in Cairo was the precipitous rise in the price of a loaf of bread. So there are some statistics that you may not think of that have contribution to the safety complexion of an environment. The second leg of the data stool, artificial intelligence, natural language processing, which is to say sentiment analysis, gathering keywords from local news media headlines related to risk, safety, security, political unrest, but also Twitter feeds, public Facebook posts, and the like. Neighborhood characteristics, the average height of buildings in a particular er area, the number of police employed per square mile, in a given area is a factor. Uh, the distance mapped from access to reliable medical facilities, for example. And then finally, the third leg, a crowdsourcing component. We call them experience reports. These are highly defined reports that can be submitted by users via mobile uh, that, when statistically significant, pinned to these locations, have contributory power to the scores. And we've done it across seven categories, physical harm, theft, women's safety, the only localized rating of its kind, political freedoms, health and medical, and LGBTQ safety. Those are all rolled up into a statistical or harmonic average overall safety. This is an example of some of that uh, variance and granularity that we've achieved, this example being San Francisco. Uh, this is neighborhood granularity. There's a big difference if you're located in the Hilton Union Square, for example, if you walk one block out the front door into Union Square at a 15 versus turning south, southeast uh, into the Tenderloin, which has a different safety complexion, albeit a 60, 60s is not that high, globally speaking. The average rating is about a 50 in urbanized environments globally. So you'll feel like you're off the beaten path, uh, maybe experiencing a, a new place uh, in uh, an unfamiliar territory uh, without necessarily having any kind of acute risk to your person. And temporal variance, these scores change both by place and over time 
In some instances, we can even show uh, day-night adjustment. We call it AM-PM adjuster. We can show the difference between the safety in an area during the day versus between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., for example. We've mapped this scoring system by GPS coordinate, geofence, at these 43,000 locations. And when you do that, map it geospatially, you can achieve uh, some unprecedented functionality, some stuff that gets very exciting. Build trip itineraries, compare and contrast locations by address, for example. You can develop uh, real-time travel insights based on where the user is standing and what would pertain to them. You can find safe refuge locations in a pinch. You can even know when to raise or lower your safety antenna based on a sort of digital tripwire, as we describe it. On personalization, this is an example of our LGBTQ experience. You see, the ratings do not necessarily stand alone in a vacuum. You, it's preferable to see them relative to one another because how does one really infer value from a quantification system? Well, you do so by seeing uh, being able to compare and contrast unfamiliar areas versus the more familiar, and then see variance, both place to place and over time. Much like understanding what 60 degrees Fahrenheit feels like in Washington, D.C., is going to be somewhat comparable, albeit with uh, difference in barometric pressure and humidity, uh, 60 degrees in another location, X, Y, Z. You start to feel what it means to you as the traveler. Importantly, this information is wrapped in a highly curated, engaging digital experience aimed at the individual traveler. That was the underserved segment as we saw it in the travel safety market. The end user, the, under, the traveler themselves. And we engage them with this location safety awareness as well as the user experience, user interface. We do not market or sell through the so-called prism of fear. We don't talk about don't go there. In fact, we're providing people with a message of reassurance, empowerment and control over one's well-being in order to promote travel. Uh, for those interested in digging deeper, you can look up uh, Daniel Kahneman uh, authored the book Thinking Fast and Slow, talking about prospect theory and loss aversion when making decisions under uncertainty. Our system and solution is specifically designed to flatten the potential loss curve towards the x-axis so that, relatively speaking, the opportunity to take that trip and gain from that trip is more appealing than the risk of taking that trip. And we enhance our partners' brands with the notion of safety stewardship. That is the promotion of safety and the welfare of users and travelers around the world being top of mind for our travel ecosystem partners, thereby drastically increasing user or traveler stickiness with those customers or with those platforms and promoting repeat purchase. This applies both not not just to U.S. travelers traveling abroad, but also uh, travelers from China and Japan coming to the United States that may not be uh, fully aware of the conditions uh, where they are headed. This message of empower, inform, and engage travelers has gained traction a lot faster than we even expected. In 2016, GeoShore had about 75,000 organic mobile users. Since launching our B2B2C channel partnership strategy in January 2017, we are now in the phones and our experience is leveraged by more than 15 million users around the world. And we expect that to go to 75 million plus by the end of this year for a variety of reasons. Partnered with some of the leading brands in travel. Amadeus, SAP Concur, TripIt, several of the top 10 travel management companies. They all like the safety, personalized safety experience wrapper 
within their digital booking tools, itinerary check, hotel search functions. We've heard a little bit today about public-private partnerships, and that is central to our mission at GeoShore. The idea is to engage travelers with safety reassurance to take that trip, to take that opportunity, and then later to extend that to the communities themselves, which have developed a positive safety feedback loop effect, as described uh, earlier in relation to ubiquitous travel and tourism safety in order to promote travel to those communities, to promote safety awareness. The simple notion of knowing when to raise or lower one's safety antenna is powerful. It increases that sense of safety reassurance, increases empowerment and control over one's well-being, encourages taking that trip off the beaten path. For more information, you can certainly visit our website, geoshoreglobal.com, or contact us. And I, I think perhaps most importantly, our goals are, are, are big goals. Safer, more predictable world, that is our mission. We believe through our safety module, safety experience, our globally scaled travel partners acting as safety stewards on behalf of their customer base, their users, their travelers, and then ultimately the safety feedback loops we can affect within communities that we will get there. Thank you.